Right, today we're going to learn about adding and subtracting decimals. And basically when we add and subtract decimals, the method's very similar for just adding and subtracting whole numbers. So, let's have a look at some examples of adding decimals. So you can have it in this form, I can also write it in your other adding form, which would be like this. And as usual, you work from the right, adding them up, so you add the 3 and the 4, the 7, you add the 1 and the 6, the 7, so you get 7.7. .7. Next one then, 1.47 plus 7.35. So, 5. 7 and 5, that's 12. And as usual with your normal adding, you'd carry the 1. So this will become 8. Then the 1 and the 7 is 8. So this one's 8.82. Next one here, I just want to write this one out and I want to make a good point about and we should really write out these problems. So here's 2.8. Now, decimal points should always be lined up. And the units and tens and tenths and hundredths should be lined up. So these are hundredths. These are tenths. You can also put a zero here because it means nothing. It's still the same number as 2.8, 2.80. 2 so 5 plus zero, that's zero, obviously. And then the 8 and 7 is 15. And carry the 1. So we'll get a 9. And we've just got a 1 there. So we'll get 19. Point. Next one, 3.02 plus 9.003, you can also put an extra zero on here if you like, but you don't need to, so we'll get 3, 2, and 0, and we'll get 2, and then we'll carry the 1, like usual, so 12.023 Let's rub some of this out I'll Leave the answers up there for you so you can see them and Also you can check them on your calculator if you like, that's also good practice So we've got three numbers here to add up Like normal arithmetic you can do with whole numbers, you can add three numbers together, so we'll do an example of it. So I've got 2 plus 3 plus 4, that comes to 9. 1 plus 3 plus 4, that comes to 8. So we'll get 8.9 for that one. So we'll go with added them, just using the normal method. Now we'll let's look at subtracting. So I'll write them out in your normal way that you used to. And we'll subtract 2 from 5 here and get 3. Subtract 3 from 7 and get 4. So we'll get 4.3. Next one I've got 6.7 minus 4.6 and get 1 there and I get 2 there. So I get 2.1 subtracting and
8.3 minus 6.5. Now, that's with your normal arithmetic again, you can borrow, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to borrow from here, I'm going to get 7, and carry that with 1 over, so I'll get the 1 there. You should know this method. So this is now 13 minus 5, which is 8. And then here we'll get 7, we've got 7 minus 6, now we'll get 1. So that becomes 1.8 and you'll also get that if you do it on your calculator. Here I've got 12.41 minus 3.76 Now again we'll Borrow, we'll borrow in here, so we'll borrow from here and then we'll get 11 minus 6 and get 5 we can't do this either, so we'll have to, have to borrow again we're we'll borrowing in this problem so now we've got 13 minus 7 so that's going to be 6 then 1 minus 3 we also can't do, so I have to borrow again. And then we we'll get 11 minus 3. So then we we'll get 8.65. I hope that's right, but that is the general technique, so it should be the right answer. Unless I've made any mistakes. So yeah, you can check these all in your calculator if you like. And the last one here is 3.7 minus 4.1. This might not make much sense, but we can always have a go at these problems. We we'll got 7 minus 1. We get 6. But look, the method doesn't work. Yeah, because we've got nowhere to borrow from. So, what we do is we use common sense to work this out. We know that if we subtract the same thing from a number, we get 0. So if we've got 3.7 minus 3.7, we know that that will come to zero. We can flip this round the other way and work out 4.1 minus 3.7. Borrow 3, 11 there, we got 4, we got zero. And then here I've got note when I've taken away 3.7. And the difference between these is 0.4. So then if I've taken away the 3.7 from there, then the 0 0.4 way, then all together from this I've taken away 4.1. So then I can say 0 minus 0 0.4 is minus 0 0.4, which is the solution. If that makes sense. This is just some logic I've used here to work this out. And it does work. You can check it on your calculator if you don't believe us about this logic. But I can guarantee it would always get you the right answer. So yeah, what I've done is I've flipped it round. I've subtracted the number from itself. And then I've taken off this result from zero. So that's the logic used there for them type of problems. And you probably won't get something like that in the exam. So, yeah, that's how I add and subtract numbers.